What we're going to be talking about today, for those of you that don't know, my name is Heather. I'm with Sound in Motion Dance, um, and I've been teaching for 13 years, and one of the things that I love and the things that really honed my teaching style was that I realized really early on that people don't are missing key information at an early stage in their dancing. So my goal is to give you that information just a little bit sooner. So what we're going to talk about today is the reason why, number one, your body rolls are not working, right? There are many different reasons. We're going to talk about one of them today, and we like to go in depth. So what we're going to do, we're going to learn about the top part of the body roll, which is often one of the pieces that's really difficult for people, especially for leaders or for guys. So when we do this, what we're going to do, we need to understand where we initiate a body roll from. So when we do a body roll, I'm talking body roll. I can do it with my feet together. I can do it with my feet staggered. I can do it with a weight transfer or without a weight transfer. The thing that happens is this part doesn't happen. So if I don't create this concave part, then the next part doesn't look as big. So if I start here and then I just go forward, it looks really small. If I start here and then go forward, all of a sudden everything looks bigger. And that's what's gonna allow our body rolls to work the way that we want them to work. So when we do this, there's a specific place that we're gonna contract at, right? And we're, when I say contract, I want you to be very careful about how you think about this. When, well, most of the time when people, when I say the word contract, people think about, we do a crunch, right? And when I do a crunch, I use my rectus abdominis, right? That's my six pack muscles that go right down the front. And when I use those, what happens is this, right? Everything contracts. We don't want everything to contract. We just want the top part to contract. And so being able to separate out different parts of our abdominals means that we need to not use our rectus abdominis. Your rectus abdominis, when you do a crunch, is gonna crunch the whole thing. You can't just isolate parts of your rectus abdominis. The whole thing will work. The layers underneath you can isolate from parts of, right? And that's what we're gonna go for today. So what I want you to do first is I want you to put your hands closed like this, right underneath your pecs. And I want you to take note of where your pinkies are. That is the spot that we're gonna aim for the fold to happen, right? So we're aiming for that to happen here, as opposed to here is just bad posture, right? So when we do this, what I want you to do is I want you to put a hand there, and I want you to put a hand right on or below your belly button. And I want you to pretend like you just had a big, huge, yummy meal. Big old, you got a big old food, ba food baby. And I want you to relax this part of your tummy for right now, right? What we're gonna do, one of the best ways that I know to get at this is we're gonna try to round. You can do it many ways. We're gonna try to round from the back. So you notice that my back is rounding here as I do this, right? I'm gonna try to give you like two or three different ways to think about this because every way works differently and connects differently with a different person. So the first thing is just to literally poke that part and try and make that part go in, right? When I make this part go in, my back rounds. If my upper thoracic, this is my upper thoracic, my upper part of my back is locked up for whatever reason, bad posture is n the number one culprit most of the time. Um, there are lots of other reasons. If you physically can't do this move, then one of the greatest things you can do is go and get some body work. Fix your posture, get a massage, go to a chiropractor, go to PT. I don't know what the answer is for you. I am not a doctor, but it literally, I've watched people physically be completely unable to do a body roll and then get an adjustment or a massage and their body was put back in alignment and then they can move the way that they want to move. So when you're dancing, you are, you are using your body in a way that it may have not been used before. So you might have to do some different things to make sure that your body's in optimal condition to do that, right? So here we're aiming for folding at the pinkies, right? And so 
even if you're sitting at a desk watching this, just do it right now. If you're at work, just like, right? We're here. And we want to get this, we want to be able to go as deep as we can with this. So instead of just going, I'm going to go as deep and as far as I can because I want the most range of motion that I can possibly get, okay? So we're just increasing that range of motion. If this is really hard for you or if you find this happening, right? If I have my hand here and my hand here, and as I go, this pulls in too, we need to check in with that and we need to not pull in. These muscles should not be tight when I do this. It's going to be right up in here, okay? So as you're doing this, you may struggle. You may be like, uh, uh, trying to fight to release these and let these work. If you're struggling with that, try and think of rounding the spine here more than contracting in the front. Like I said, different things work for different people. So once we have that, our next piece is to be able to go from this to this, right? So we're going, this part is going back and then this same part right here needs to come forward. When I come forward, how I counterbalance is with my butt, right? So if I don't counterbalance, then I'm gonna fall on my face, right? So I have my in and my forward. The most common thing that happens here that people do incorrectly is they go from here to here. And this is actually taking my chest up, not straight forward. So we wanna know the difference between forward and up, okay? We wanna go forward. The more distance that I create of separation between my rib cage, right, my rib cage and my hips, the farther I can make that happen, the bigger my body roll is going to look. So we've got our in, then our forward. And remember, we're going as big as we can, right? We want to stretch and let our, we want to find our end range of motion, right? So if we don't go big, we'll never find that end range of motion and we'll always be operating on really small body rolls. So I go as big as I can here, as far as I can here. Now, when I go forward, What's gonna make this look better? Because a lot of the times, something like this happens and I have tension all in my shoulder line right here. So what we wanna do is, I wanna go from here, I'm letting my shoulder blades, yes, we're talking about shoulder blades in a body roll video. I'm gonna let my shoulder blades wrap and relax around the sides of my body. A lot of the times people's shoulder blades are really stuck and they don't move very well from having a rounded forward shoulder posture, right? So. Your teacher was right. Posture is really important in dance, but also in just allowing your body to move the way you want it to move. So when I contract here, my shoulder blades wrap around just a little bit. I need to let them wrap around the side of my body. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, it's, it's gonna be like somebody grabbed the bottom of my shoulder blades and is pulling them straight down as I go forward. So right here you can see, that's what happens when I pull my shoulder blades straight down. So we go in and forward, in and forward, in and forward, in and forward. So once we have that understanding that I'm able to go, I wanna be able to go back and forth and I wanna be able to do that quickly, right? It's kinda like, just like a chest pop, but I need to be able to go in first, then forward. Then after that, I can go up and I can finish the rest of my body roll, which will be a totally different video because these things take time. But for now, we've got our in and our forward. Right now, I've been doing it just in a comfortable stance here with my feet in parallel position. When I take this and I change it and I go with either foot forward and do what I call a staggered stance body roll, right, which is really common. It's gonna be really common in all three, salsa, bachata, zook, right? In salsa, it'll be when I go forward, on the, I can do a body roll on the forward part of my basic. Very rarely, I wouldn't say very rarely, but not as often are you just standing there when you're doing a body roll. We're often moving through it. And with that comes the challenge of weight transfer. When we do this, first thing is, I am almost never going to um, do my body roll onto a straight leg. It's gonna cause me to fall out of balance, right? So what I want is I want to be able to come from here on my back leg 
my contracted point to my forward point on my front leg. Okay? It gives me a really so it gives me a really big distance that my body is going, so it'll make my body roll naturally look bigger just because of the weight transfer feature. Now the other piece of this is when we step onto this leg, we want to really make sure that I'm stepping onto a bent leg because that's going to allow my hips to work and do what they need to do. If I step onto a straight leg, my hips aren't countering the way that they should. So when I'm here and I step onto a bent leg, my hips counter to the back and they're able to. If I do this and then I step onto a straight leg, my hips can't counter to the back nearly as much, right? So we want that counter there. Right? So this is a hugely important essential skill to have in working through a body roll. Just being able to transfer onto a bent leg. Now, as we're talking about this, uh, one of the things that I would like to tell you is that frequently we think we're doing that or we think we're doing these things, but we're in fact not. So the most simple thing you can do right now is grab your phone, take a video of you doing this part of your body roll, just this, and see, so then you're going to watch it, and then you're going to watch this video again, and compare them. It's a super powerful way to practice and to see what you're actually doing, and make sure that your brain's not tricking you into thinking you're doing it right, because frequently there's almost always something we can be doing better, right? So. Take a video of yourself doing this move from the same angle that this video is of me doing it. That's key. And then you can watch them side by side and you can really compare and you can be like, oh, my leg is straight there. Oh, hers is much more bent than I thought. I think mine's bent, but mine's not that bent. Or you look and you're like, wow, I'm really not going back that far. Or wow, I'm actually going up when I think I'm going forward, right? It's a very, very powerful tool to create lasting change in your practice and in your, in your dancing. So that is our tip for today, body rolls. If you like this video, please comment. If you try this and you have great success with it, or even if you don't, let us know. We love to hear about our students' efforts and how they're doing in, their, um, in your dancing. Also, um, feel free to, we have, a, we have an email list you can join, and on the list you'll be always sent these videos as soon as we release them. And also, feel free to let us know what kind of other topics you'd like us to cover, what, you, what questions you have about dance that you feel like you would love to see answered, and we will do our best to answer those. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.